This is the Hyundai Tucson facelift that made its India debut all the way back in February at Auto Expo 2020. Now, the pandemic has caused a little bit of a delay, but it's finally here and we're going to drive it for you. At first glance, it might look very similar to the old Tucson, but dig a little deeper and there are some crucial changes and we're going to tell you all about them today. Let's quickly run through what's new outside. The changes aren't as significant as we saw on say the Verna or Elantra facelifts, but they do help. The cascading grille is now sharper and finished in chrome rather than brushed silver. The LED headlamps are redesigned and there's a new DRL signature around the fog lamps. There's a new design for the 18-inch alloys and around the back you'll find redesigned tail lamps and reflector strips that have moved slightly higher up. But what do you think about the Refresh Tucson? Let us know in the comments below and as always, be sure to like, share and subscribe. Now let's step inside because here there's one big difference. Now there's quite a significant change on the inside of the Tucson. For one, it's an all-black color scheme rather than black and beige. And the dashboard is almost entirely new. What was previously a very tall, bluff, flat-sided dashboard is now very curved and sculpted. And it's got this nice soft touch leatherette effect over here with double stitching. Now there are loads of new features including this freestanding touchscreen which gets connected car tech, but I'll get into that in a little bit. You'll also find that this is still a very practical cabin with loads of storage spaces. But there's one feature I do want to talk about and it's not the driver's seat but rather the passenger seat. You see, in the previous Tucson, the passenger seat was not powered and it didn't have height adjust and it was placed really low to the ground. Now it is powered and you can raise it up so your passenger won't feel like they're sat underneath the dashboard. So in addition to what I've mentioned already, the Tucson gets important new features like a wireless mobile phone charger, a new Infinity 8 speaker sound system and a panoramic sunroof. But one feature we'd have liked to see was cooled seats like on the Creta, which it doesn't get. But then you have to remember that the Creta is an all new car while this is just a facelift and the Tucson still does get a very healthy dose of equipment. Now let's move over to the back seat, which is really where you want to be in a Tucson. Space and comfort have always been strengths of the Tucson's back seat and that hasn't changed at all. You still get plenty of knee room and loads of width. It's really great for carrying three people sitting abreast. Headroom also is very good though I suspect slightly less than before thanks to the frame for this sunroof. The seat itself is also very very comfortable and as before has this slight recline function for that little bit extra comfort. The only thing I'm not such a fan of is that the seat for such a big SUV is set quite low and the window sill is quite high so with the black interior you do feel a little bit hemmed in but it is alleviated to a great deal by the huge panoramic sunroof. The boot too should be a selling point for the Tucson because it is absolutely huge. And now time to get behind the wheel because there's one key difference here too. So what's new mechanically with the facelifted Tucson? Well, I'm driving the diesel version. It uses the same 2.0-litre engine with 185 horsepower and 400 newton meters, But this time it's BS6 compliant. What's it like now? Well, pretty much as you remember it. It's pretty refined for the most part until you extend it to the very end of its power band at which point it does make a little bit of a boomy noise. It also still comes with drive modes and thankfully they work really well in that comfort mode is the best of both worlds. Eco mode saves you a lot of fuel without you really feeling it. That's what you want it to do. And sport mode, well, it immediately makes things a whole lot more responsive. Even in a car as big as this, it's got a lot of punch, this engine, and you'll never be left wanting for power. Up against our testing equipment, the performance is certainly impressive, with 0 to 100 kph coming up in just 9.76 seconds. That's 0.3 seconds quicker than the old BS4 version, but the power and torque outputs are the same, so how is that possible? Well, there's one more new addition to the diesel powertrain. What is new is the 8-speed torque converter automatic up from the old 6-speed torque converter that was in the previous car. 
Now, the old gearbox was pretty smooth, but this one is just that little bit better and feels a bit more modern. It's a little bit more responsive, a little bit smoother and a little bit more seamless. And with more ratios to play with, you always feel that it's got the right one for the job. Now, ride quality was always a Tucson strength and that hasn't changed here either. It's a very, very comfortable riding car and you and your passengers will always be very well cushioned from the bumps of the road. The other side of that coin is that the Tucson is not a great handler. It feels quite soft, it rolls around quite a bit, there's a fair deal of understeer and the steering doesn't feel very quick or sharp. So despite all that power, this is a car that prefers to be driven at a more leisurely pace. So it might not be the most engaging SUV to drive on your favourite winding road, but what it excels at is highway cruising where you'll find rock-solid stability and a healthy reserve of power for overtaking. Now with the facelift and upgrading to BS6, the prices have gone up a bit. The range starts at 22.3 lakh rupees X showroom, but this top-spec diesel with all-wheel drive costs a considerable 27.03 lakh. That's proper premium SUV pricing. And while the performance, size and space do justify it to some extent, when you look at it in the context of Hyundai's own best seller, the Creta, which costs 17.3 lakh rupees in top spec, it does make you wonder if it's worth the stretch. There is an all new Tucson on the horizon, too, which will likely even get seven seats, but that is still a very, very long time away from launching. In the meantime, then, what you're getting is Hyundai's flagship SUV a big and comfortable five-seat family car with loads of equipment, performance and comfort. It may not be as good an all-rounder as the Creta, but you certainly get a whole lot of Hyundai.